as usual, I'm hoping that this um, microphone's working. <laughs> I won't know until I get home. Uh, first stop is gonna be dropping off a box. It's my, um, my Climb Badlands Pro GTX gloves are going back to climb because the, the, uh, they're too small for me. So I'm going to be sizing them up for the double XL, as I mentioned in a previous video. Maybe I did mention this in a previous video. I can't remember. Um, in this video, I wanted to talk about health and fitness. It's everyone's favorite topic. But, um, you know, my uh, a couple things transpired uh, to go on this journey. And I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of these... For you all before I end up not riding for like six not six months to the rest of my life so um, my surgery next week it's uh, a week from today so um, a few things aligned with me and the first was that uh, I gave up a really big side job so I stopped doing property management when I moved to Charlotte so I went from managing a few hundred different rental units to none <laughs> And uh, that gave me a lot of free time, a lot less money, but a lot more free time. Uh, and the second thing that happened, was I uh, started a new job that had really good um, uh, health insurance. And that, that made a huge difference on the kind of stuff I can get done. And so I've been taking advantage of that a lot. Um, but also something like also happened, which was kind of being in the South, uh, as opposed to being kind of stuck indoors, relegated to skiing <laughs> and ice fishing uh, from November to May. I got to like be outside all winter. So that helped too in this whole story I'm gonna take you on. And then finally, um, I hate leaf blowers, man. Not leaf blowers, but like people blowing leaves on my bike or my car. Um, last thing that happened was, um, well, I'll talk about that in the future. Future video for that one. So I, 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 what, I what I'll say is that I uh, am currently wearing Invisalign in my mouth. Uh, I'm on a nine month program, straighten out my top and bottom teeth. I had some pretty bad crowding on the bottom after not getting my wisdom teeth taken out for like six years after I started having issues. And so Invisalign's gonna save that for me. And uh, I'm also gonna be widening my teeth, whitening toward the end. And this is gonna be good. You know, it's purely uh, purely aesthetic. Uh, all, the, only, the one big advantage is going to be that I will be able to finally reach some of the backs of my teeth that are currently unreachable. That'll make my teeth um, healthier longer. Uh, I always have a lot of buildup on the back of my teeth in the front because some of the teeth are just really hard to brush. So um, Invisalign, um, I'm paying $500 for it um, total out of pocket, uh, which is about you know a quarter of what it would cost if I didn't have such amazing benefits at my job. Um, so I got that done. I started that process three days ago. It's been kind of hard, but it's also kind of, I was already kind of dieting and it's, it's, it's only, let's sit here. It's only boosted my dieting because it is not fun to, um, yes. So no, we're not, are we? Yeah, we can go in here. Um, it's not fun to eat with these things in. Well, you can't eat these things in, but these things basically don't allow, um, you can't drink sparkling water, you can't drink coffee, you can't drink any brown liquid or any non-clear liquids. So you gotta drink just water, but you also can't have anything with sugar in it and you can't have any dark liquids or sparkling liquids. And so what does that mean? What well, is drinking water? <laughs> Luckily, my office is these dispensers that actually dispense flavored water that is sugar-free, that has caffeine, uh, as well as, uh, is it over here somewhere? Yeah. Um, 
So these dispensers have like six different flavors. You could do sparkling, hot, cold, ambient, and then you can add like vitamin C, echinacea and stuff or caffeine to it. So that's really nice. I'm gonna park right over here. I'll pause the video for a second. I'll get right back to you when it comes to the Invisalign stuff. 15 minute parking, that's me. I'm a 15 minute parker. Oh yeah. All right, we're back. Hey everyone. So, um, yeah, the, the Invisalign thing, so it's really limited on my water. I was already going to do, doing like a 12 hour fast every day. So basically just skipping, uh, you know, or 9 p.m., 9 a.m. between meals. And then, um, yeah. And then I uh, have started fasting uh, 16 hours a day. So basically last meal at 8 p.m. And then I end up eating again at like 9 or sorry, noon or 1 p.m. So we're going to go down here to Weddington and over to Weddington Road. We're just going to keep that open. So now with Invisalign, I'm fasting for 16 hours a day because you have to remove these things in order to eat and remove them. It takes a little bit of work. And then after you eat or drink your non-water, <laughs> uh, you have to floss and brush. And so the whole thing takes a bit of time, um, a bit of time indeed. And so, there we go. And um, I also did metabolic screening. I, I'm a nutritionist now, that's cost me nothing. So I'm doing nutritionist visits, it's unlimited nutritionist visits, which include a metabolic screening. And I learned that my metabolism is, is 1900 calories a day resting. Um, if I do nothing. So in order to maintain my current weight of, it was 268, I have to basically um, eat less than 1950 calories per day. <laughs> very, very low metabolism for my age. And the only way to fix it is to um, build more muscle. And so I've been, and also muscle is also will help me recover faster from my rotator cuff surgery next week. So I've been doing a lot of core work, arm work, uh, shoulder work, back work, and then just a lot of trail running. So um, I started walking the dog a mile a day. Then we started doing uh, three to six mile hikes on the weekends. And then I started running with him, like run, walk, run, walk. And now we're doing, you know, one mile running, two miles hiking uh, three days a week with one mile of just a normal after walk. So I have a bunch of trail shoes I've balled and I've been doing a bunch of trail running uh, around here, there's like 80 different parks in the Charlotte uh, park system. And they're all basically these greenways with a bunch of like, um, the way I would, I would, I would, I would rate it as kind of like cross country kind of stuff, you know, like, so there's not, no pavement, just um, gravel and mud and dirt. So I've been doing um, a lot of trail running with the dog. And that helps me allow, at least drink beer at night. <laughs> Uh, each beer is 250, 300 calories, and so if I want to drink at night, I just have my hair cut, so I'm kind of a little bit hairy right now, itchy. Uh, so if I want to be able to drink at night, I have to go running with the dog, <laughs> basically, because 1,900 calories is, you know, two meals. That's, uh, you know, two 800 calorie or 900 calorie um, meals, which, you know, that's like a grilled chicken sandwich and um, some kind of a carbohydrate, like potatoes or something. It's just, it's hard to stay on 900 calories. And if I want to drink, I have to go and do exercise. So I'm done two meals a day, no snacking, just water and beer at night, no caffeine. Uh, even with the bevy machine we have, I'm, I don't have the caffeine turned on anymore. I've turned caffeine off. Don't need it. I feel fine without it. Uh, there was no like, you know, detachment period. And uh, this light better change for me, by the way. <laughs> really hope it changes. Um, did the nutritionist that's going really well we're, we're i'm using the my fitness pal thing and she's looking through my stuff every week and we're meeting once a week on, on zoom to kind of go through 
and discuss um, how I did this week, goals for next week, that kind of stuff, meal ideas. So that's been really awesome. Heather has one too, so we're they're kind of working together to to keep us healthy. U M efforts. Come on, guys. Um. So, um, after. Come on, guys. Um, so after the nutritionist stuff, uh, what else have I done? Oh, I had my podiatry appointment. That was really well. So I've had a pain in my left leg for a long time. They call it footballer's ankle. Uh, that's when your ankle goes back like this toward your shin upwards. Uh, you pinch a, a ligament or a nerve and it causes really sharp pain. When I'm standing on the pegs all weekend on my mo motorcycle, um, if I get lazy or my calf muscle wears out, I will pinch that. Come on. Come on, please change. Oh, fuck's sake. Um, but, so it, it basically, my I would have three or four days limping after a small little uh, sharp pain like that from motorcycling. And it turns out I have a bone spur on the front of that ankle from front of my ankle a lot of times as a kid doing sports and martial arts. And so now uh, I have surgery scheduled on that to basically ch uh, saw away that bone spur and clean it up and make it where it won't pinch anymore, which is awesome. I don't really know if I can go for this or not. I mean, this is kind of shit, right? I'm going to die, aren't I? That's an example of uh, the Charlotte roads, by the way, don't seem to know I exist. Uh, I get a lot of these situations where the light just doesn't change for me. And so even that car behind me was not close enough to trigger the, uh, the light changing, which just really, really sucks. It happens all the time here. Um, so surgery so schedule at some point to get that bone spur taken care of. It's going to be the next few months. I'm on their list of like standby list. Uh, so, but I just went really well. I also went to have a foot fungus. I've had this, I've had crackly legs and, or, or sorry, feet and nails for like 20 years. I didn't know it was a fungus. I had no idea. He was like, you know, have a foot fungus, right? I'm like, oh, I had no idea. So I took care of that and that's clearing up really nicely. Uh, they also revealed that I have very thin fat pads on my heels, super, super thin, which explains why like if I do a lot of barefoot walking on the house, cleaning up or cooking or something, uh, I'll have to, the next day I'm basically like in pain in my feet. He's like, basically just wear shoes uh, everywhere and you'll be fine. But as I get older, those fat pads are gonna get thinner. Uh, so that was a fun one to learn. So podiatrist visit was super helpful, uh, worth my $20 copay. Uh, dermatology, they prescribe stuff for my uh, dry skin, which is awesome. And they also uh, cut out a piece of my skin on my back and tested it and I am cancer free. It was, uh, it was sun damage, but it was not uh, cancer. Isn't that great news? Uh, what else? Uh, orthopedics, obviously that led to me getting my rotator cuff uh, MRI scanned and that surgery is scheduled for Wednesday and I'll have unlimited physical therapy for as long as I need it this year to get things back to normal. Uh, chiropractor, I did like 12 sessions. I'm going to start going again at the end of this year once my shoulder's back to normal. I didn't want to mix physical therapy and surgery recovery with chiropractor. Um, same with acupuncture. That'll hold off to the end of this year. Uh, as far as all of my cholesterol and, you know, sugars and all that good stuff and the blood work, all good. I'm healthy as a horse, great heart rate, great blood pressure, great everything, no issues, nothing, no nutrient deficiencies, which is awesome. Um, I did find out I have like uh, dust mites in my eyebrows. That was a weird one. So I went to the optometrist and she was like, do you ever have dry itchy eyes? I said, yeah. I said, yeah. She says, uh, well, it's because you have these little, uh, your, your eye gland, your oil glands and your eyelashes are blocked by uh, some kind of, uh, you know, dead skin. And I was like, oh, that's great. So she prescribed me these wipes that I have to use once a day for, quote, the rest of my life. I use them every three days. They don't really, um, they're not killing it. They're just making it better. It's really unfortunate. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to get too, you know, share, oversharing here, but uh, I, I went to never going to the doctor for like, years and years and years and then i've been to every specialist i could go to uh what else nutritionist um what else have i gone to oh i did allergy test a full allergy panel i'm allergic to um indoor 
um, mites, like the things that live in your sheets and in your, on your skin. And so um, that was a fun thing to learn. I got a little thing that I can take, uh, like a nasal spray that works. You know, when I have any flare ups, it clears it right up and it just kind of blocks whatever's in the air at that moment. So, you know, as needed kind of thing. Um, I also have a minor bee allergy, very, very minor. So I got some EpiPens for like 10 bucks a piece, but I didn't, uh, I don't, you know, hopefully I don't have to use them. I've gotten stung hundreds of times growing up in Alabama, walking around in the woods barefoot, but I've never, um, yeah, fun fact, I'm allergic to bees a little bit, but I can develop as, old, as you age. So that's, that's it. Um, oh, I had my hearing done. You guys have asked me to do that. Some of the older guys at rallies have been like, hey, Adam, uh, you should get your, you should get your hearing done. And uh, I did. It turns out that um, I'm good. So for my age, uh, I am a little bit, I'm at the very lowest of, you know, where it starts to show signs of deafness. I'm at the very lowest for bass for my age, but I'm still above normal, if that makes sense. And I'm just fine for trouble. My hearing is good, uh, no cause for concern. Uh, but obviously they said I should wear ear, ear protection when I'm riding motorcycles, and I do. I also wear ear protection when I go to concerts or any of this kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, no problem there. And I'm doing what I can to keep my ears and hearing safe, which is good. What else have I done? Jeez. Um, I'm trying to think about what else I've taken care of. I've been sending my mom with these updates, by the way, on the th different things I've been doing, and she's been kind of like blown away by all the things I've been looking at getting fixed. But uh, it's all good stuff, right? Like I think that health is uh, is great, especially when your copay for specialist visits is twenty bucks and your labs are fifty, um, and your blood work is all covered, <laughs> and your you know your medic your medicine copay is all ten. Uh, it makes all this stuff really really easy to do. And um, the invisible line being 500 bucks. I mean, something like this is just great. I think we have a LASIK benefit too. So if I can, if I can come up with five grand, I might get LASIK as well. But you know, the whole thing is just, it's just compounding on itself. Um, uh, so, you know, losing weight, I was 268, now I'm 258. It's only been a couple of weeks and uh, feeling better. Uh, I think drink, cutting alcohol would be huge if I can do that. But overall, like it's just, it's just really important to, Get all this stuff taken care of, especially when I'm late, when I'm young. Uh, all the specialists I've seen have told me, like, you're really young to be coming to see us, but we're glad you are because, you know, you're getting a baseline for a lot of different stuff that we just wouldn't have data on when you were an older guy. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, that that's kind of my, um, I'm excited, right? I'm excited to be going through all this. And uh, it's been going super well. And the last thing is I was working with an occupational therapist around and doing, um, we're still recording, probably. And doing um, exams around uh, different learning disabilities. This is a fun one. So I wasn't one of those kids that was like, you know, given Prozac or whatever the kids got when I was a kid in the 90s um, for ADD or ADHD or, you know, all kinds of other learning disabilities. Um, my parents were pretty, you know, they weren't herbalists. Uh, they also weren't like helicopter parents. They were just kind of like, conservative on uh, dosing me up with stuff. So like I've never had antibiotics. When I had stitches, it was always like butterfly bandages and do DIY at home. I don't even know if we had insurance when I was a kid. I mean, I was we, we were pretty poor. Uh, my parents were always kind of do-it-yourselfers. Uh, I was vaccinated for everything to go to school, but other than that, I wasn't really, I didn't, I didn't ever go to hospitals. Uh, from age like five to 25, I didn't go to a hospital. So um, I was, intrigued to learn that uh, I'm dyslexic um, and, I, and it's funny because when I was a kid I thought dyslexia just meant that you sometimes write things backwards or read things backwards um, or say things backwards out of order I, I didn't know that dyslexia was and can be, it's different for everyone, but can be a suite of all kinds of symptoms that if I were born today, I would probably be tested for. Uh, but if you look back, and this should be its own video, I think, because it's going to be a super long discussion or share, oversharing. But I think if you like, if you look at my school experience, 
you know, always having problems uh, studying for tests, always bad at doing tests, uh, overall underperformer, liked working in computers and on network diagrams and more like visual process stuff, um, but less into the whole book and reports and, and like, you know, listen to someone talk to me in a classroom for, you know, three or four hours. Um, my high school GPA, when I graduated, was a 2.49, uh, you know, a D average student. Uh, and, I, and I was, and I ended up not taking algebra, algebra one, two, I didn't take geometry, I didn't take trigonometry, I didn't take um, uh, any sort of biosciences or biology. I took uh, liberal arts, math, and, um, and science. And uh, they gave me the minimum amount of credits. And all of my electives were basically media lab, where I would fix computers, set up servers. Uh, I built the school's Wi-Fi network. I built the school's network printers network. I built set up their file sharing system. Uh, did a bunch of resource cataloging. Uh, you know, helped with building up some spreadsheets for the football team on and tracking player stats and things. I mean, I was very productive in my school. I spent a lot of time in the administrative building, but um, I, I wasn't good at my schoolwork. And, you know, it showed. I mean, I just, I, I kept kind of giving, being given the same, I wasn't skipping years, I was still earning credits. It's, it's a Florida thing. I was still earning credits to graduate, but I wasn't being given any new work. Um, and then I look at how I've managed, and this is from a young age, by the way, um, and I was reading a bunch of articles on dyslexia like a week ago going, what? Because this was revealed to me in a session and then I'm like, you know, trying to figure out what that all means when I get home and I'm reading a bunch of stuff and it's like, holy crap, like that's me, that's all me. And I didn't know this about myself until I was 36 years old. But I think in all the ways that I actually would, like I developed a suite of what you call coping mechanisms to survive and they ended up helping me become who I am today, which is like this very organized, very successful uh, project program manager, you know, business person that is set to solve complex problems and make them digestible, break them into tasks and milestones and sprints, organize projects, uh, manage budgets, connect with people, you know, all the stuff that like, you know, that I do and I, and I love doing is because I'm dyslexic. Because what I started doing as a young kid, at age 12, I relied on my PDA's calendar religiously. Everything went into the calendar. Everything had a task. Everything was written down. Everything was fleshed into milestones. I would, I would, I would make all the assignments bite-sized and make them into, um, you know, digestible. Uh, where, where am I going here? Make sure I'm going the right place. Okay, so we're gonna take a left at Wellesley Chapel. Um, I mean, I was basically project managing my entire high school uh, while still being very distracted by computers, technology, and programming, web design, and writing, and, and you know, blogging and other stuff. But I think about the way I, like I don't read books. I haven't read a book in 25 years. Uh, I read audio, I do audio books. Um, I prefer reading short blogs and writing blogs. I like putting information out there, but I also don't proofread my blog. And I know for a fact it's really, poorly written uh, and when I do things that are for business I read them like eight or twenty times like when I'm gonna post a, a message to thousands of people either by email or a memo or something uh, I fuss over it for hours because I will could keep finding more typos uh, that even spell check doesn't find and that's just because I'm dyslexic and I read using bionic reader you should look it up I use bionic reader to read everything it uh, it, it, it changes the bold um, case of every every four letters and it changes the actual font case and adds like variances that allow my brain to track words easier um, I'm also incredibly visual I speak visually uh, and I, I like to consume visually the way I organize things with calendars and to do's and notes the way I'm very process driven and and like things to follow the order that we've all agreed and set uh, and I'm not an asshole about it but like everything that I use as a coping mechanism ended up being a really great mindset for business. <laughs> and the reason my YouTube channel sucks, I don't like, I don't, I don't believe there is any value 
in polished, edited, adding music, adding titles, adding thumbnails, adding, uh, you know, pretty things. Uh, I am creative, but I'm not someone that thinks there should be any fuss. Don't add fluff to this. Don't add catchy edits. Just, just, just start recording and let, let the story come through. Um, you know, I don't do stuff on Instagram or, or TikTok or Snapchat because those things are like, well, that's all about the fluff. It's not about the content. It's all about the fluff. And I, and I, so I like, I, I guess I just didn't know it that I was dyslexic and I've taken tests before for ADD and ADHD, but like, you know, they're professional tests, but they're still self-led. And I always tested no of those. Um, it turns out I'm dyslexic. And my wife, as she was reading through some of the things, was like, wow, like this is you to a T. Everything about this is you. And I'm thinking about one story that I remember very vividly. I was 15 or 16 years old, and I had been using a laptop in school since I was 12 or 13. I mean, my parents didn't stop me. They also didn't give me the laptop. They weren't an enabler. I saved up and I bought a laptop and I used it at school on the Wi-Fi and printer network that I created. And so I didn't use, I didn't write anything with a pen and paper from age 12 on. And because I enjoyed using computers, but I didn't know that it's because I, I, I was, had a hard time writing things with a pen or pencil or uh, reading things that were not typeset and on a straight line. So like if I read someone else's handwriting, I would, I would struggle to read it, but if they had it printed up and, and printed out or type typewritten, uh, it was much clearer and easier to read. Um, and so I was thinking back to a time when I was 15 or 16, I was at the beach of my dad and my sisters and we were all writing our names in the sand and my dad started laughing. He was like, Adam, your, your D's and your C's and your K's, they're all backwards. Like I actually was writing letters backwards from how they should be written. And he was blown away. He was like, are you trying to be creative? I'm like, no, looks normal to me. And my dad, you know, it's my dad. It's, I'm not, this is not like a shit on my dad's story, I promise. Uh, my dad's like, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious, he says. And we kind of go on with our day. And he's told the story a few times to people. And I just wonder if anyone heard that story and was like, does Adam know he's dyslexic? <laughs> because Adam's definitely dyslexic. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, I probably would have been given um, special educational opportunities, tutors, et cetera, if it was today. But in, you know, 86 to 2004, I wasn't, no one told me I was dyslexic. No one asked me if I was dyslexic and no one gave me any um, remediation. They just kept putting me back in liberal arts math over and over and over again until I graduated. And they're like, okay, goodbye. Uh, I didn't, you know, I tried to take an SAT study test, did horribly at those. I never took the SATs. Uh, I never took any, did any entrance exams for colleges. I have always really struggled with getting certifications. I have to study a lot harder than a lot of other people to pass tests and get certified for things. Um, but I learned by doing like my BMW stuff with you guys. You know, I, I learn by experimentation and playing around and fiddling and I get good that way. I don't get good by reading a book because uh, it's really hard to read books and really dive into a, 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 a huge page of text. It's, it looks, all the words become just one to me. Um, as for what I'm going to do about it, the thing I can do about it, dyslexia is actually how your brain is wired. Your brain is, 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 is wired up a completely different way from non-dyslexic folks. Roughly 7% of Americans are dyslexic. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I'm going to have to, it's, it's my, it's my thing. I've coped with it long enough. I'm probably not going to take up painting, um, or pottery anytime soon but uh, I am this way. And, you know, it's just, it's just really, I'm just kind of blown away. And this whole journey of like fitness and stuff, like, and I'm gonna be in a sling for six weeks with my rotator cuff, still eating my 1900 calories a day, but still going on walks in the evenings. Uh, during my recovery, uh, you know, without motorcycling, I'm gonna be doing uh, a lot of studying for my PMP, 
which I've been wanting to get for years. I've been studying for it for 10 years and never really gone to the next thing. And, and my, my employer gives me $5,000 a year for professional development. So I've actually signed up for a boot camp and a study group. And I'm going to cram for it with a bunch of people. Um, like, I, I, I feel like I'm finally getting my shit together. Um, and all this is a deadline for me. So all this has a deadline of like seven, eight months from now. Um, and so I'm trying to get all this in. So I want to get my foot surgery done by then. I want all this stuff done. I want to be healthy and in shape and happy and looking good and feeling good and have no more, you know, serious physical ailments. Um, and just really just be kind of in control of, of, my health and my sanity and understand myself a bit better just all that together and so i'm working really hard on that and um i guess all this is in closing that even though you're not going to see as much of me this summer i want you all to know <laughs> that despite the fact this channel will be not very entertaining for the next six months i am busy i'm working on myself um i'm getting healthy i'm taking care of shit and I really, really, really hope that you'll all see a difference when I come back to you. And it won't just be straighter and whiter teeth. Uh, it'll be a completely new way of living. Uh, and so that, that, that's me in a nutshell. Um, I'll do another video for you all soon, but uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to say I appreciate everyone. And uh, I know, I know, that among all the YouTube people that you folks watch, especially the YouTube people that ride motorcycles, I'm the most boring of all of them. I'm not the most snazzy or the sexiest or the, the most wild, adventurous, craziest. Um, but I am the most uh, interesting <laughs> from like a, you know, total background, you know, the way I got started with life, the way I arrived here. You know, growing up on a farm in Florida, barely graduating high school, not going to college, and, you know, now moving all around the country four times, uh, all over the world, traveling and doing these these amazing jobs that I, that I think a lot of people haven't had the opportunity to do. And I've done it with supposedly a learning disability uh, <laughs> and without a college degree. Uh, and I'm finally, thanks to this really great job, these great benefits, I'm finally taking care of some shit that's long overdue. So that is, uh, that's my video today. Uh, I appreciate all you watching. I hope you're all safe and well. And um, yeah, have a great day. Be safe.